Yo, where are my cannabis users at out there? I know y'all are out there, and I know you love it, so check this out. You can shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more at thefreezepipe.com and use code DUDES for 10% off your entire order, okay? That's thefreezepipe.com and code DUDES for 10% off. Look, yo, freeze pipe is lit. There's a freeze pipe to match your style. Traditional pipes just use water filtration for smooth hits, but with freeze pipe, you get water filtration and their market-leading freezable glycerin chambers that cool smoke by over 300 degrees, okay? That's thefreezepipe.com. Use code DUDES. 10% off. American-owned. Price affordably with free domestic shipping. Order today and start fighting fire with ice. Dudes behind the foods. Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dudes behind the food. Yeah, it's the dudes behind the food. That's actually really fucking good. What's up, y'all? Hold on a second. He's stroking a baby penis right now. <laughs> We're in the future, motherfucker. Dude, I got to tell you right now, you look so cool and dumb at the same time. Oh. And I don't know how to feel. Oh, wow. Dude. <laughs> dude, don't put a penis in my mouth right Hold now. Hold on a second. That's not, that's not an emotion, dude. That's 100% <laughs> not an emotion. <laughs> You're just, this guy, for those of you who are listening right now, he has the Apple Vision Quest Pro on his face. And he looks like he's from the future. Apple Vision Pro Plus Goggle Google Plus Little Goggles. Yes. Yes, that is his tie name. <laughs> <laughs> this is his full tie name right there. <laughs> what I'm are just, you seeing right now? Uh, it's telling me, look, I'm setting it up. So it says, look at the window corner and pinch to resize. Wait. Oh. Wow. Wow. Whoa. My mom, I'm going to buy this tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. What does that do? Hold the digital crown to recenter your view. Oh, oh. And that brings it back. I'm going to get the MetaQuest Pro or something. You know what this is going to be so dope at? Uh -huh. International flights, 14 hours. You could just lay back and then just watch TV right in front of your face. Like it's a, like I can do this? Yeah. And then it's like I'm watching a big giant screen. Yeah, dude. You could watch your movies. You could do, you could do all your work. You could hook this up to your laptop and it takes over and then you have multiple screens. So you don't need multiple screens and you just sit there and do your work. Look up at the top of your view and tap for control center. This guy's not even in the podcast right now. I, you know what? I'm trying to just get through the settings so I can fucking, um, all right, you know, let's just do this later, but I'll keep it on for a bit. This is so weird watching what he's doing. It's fucking nuts. It's pretty strange, right? Because if y'all see me, I'm just waving my hands around. Yeah. Hey, look, if you guys love tech, right? There's no way that the Apple Vision Quest Pro uh, doesn't intrigue your your childlike whimsy right because just to put it in perspective like we're in our 30s i just got a text and you saw that and text! it popped up in front of your face dog that's wild reply okay let me send you my dick pic <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> reply in oh, let me just try this real quick reply in messages how does this work now if i move this here move this down oh whoa uh reply what if i do this uh, hey Siri, reply to this text message. <gasps> to Chia Wifey. That is so fast. Baby girl, I have my cool new glasses on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I said to Chia Wifey. And this is where the tech <laughs> needs to be developed. It's, it's not still. set up yet. It's not set up. When we were younger, right, this, the implication of this is something that people would put in sci-fi stuff, like in the year 2050, tw you know, 2100. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy how much technology has advanced now. Like even to the first iteration of these uh, virtual reality headsets, right, there were other ones before it became commercialized that we didn't, that, you know, wasn't in our hands. But it went from VR and now we're doing augmented reality, which is AR, where you see the spatial area of the world and then virtual things are placed within reality, thus augmented reality. Or if you're a dog, a arf. <laughs> you laughing with those glasses look <laughs> 10 times more stupid. <laughs> so, like the, this, what Apple does so far, okay, you're not even doing anything right now. You're just trying to touch me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, I'm just going to so do that to people and start grabbing people's tits. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Apple Vision Quest Pro. I was picking out melons in the supermarket. <laughs> I'm just trying to text, dude. Yeah. I'm just trying to send a text message. <laughs> How crazy, man. And when you get too close to the microphone, a little thing that pops up says, move, you're too close to an object, so you don't, like, bonk your face. Wow. Weird. I need to, I need to take a little break. Ugh, because it, it needs to be a little tighter, so it's a little heavy on the front right now. So I'm, like, kind of doing this to even it out. Oh, it's always going to be heavy in the front. I heard that's, like, the biggest thing that people don't like about yeah, it. Yeah, but if it was a little tighter, it wouldn't be. i got to figure it. I just got to read the directions. Wow. How uh. cool. You were in the future for a second. Well, how do you feel? Do you feel better than us? A little bit. All right. Yeah, a little bit. Um, how like, nuts is it? How crystal clear is the screen? It is clear. It is clear. I actually, um, and I ordered uh, prescription things to slide in, so it's not going to be my prescription, so it's like super clear. Wow. Trippy, dog. That is amazing. It's weird. It's like Minority Report. Have you seen Minority Report? Yeah. What am I, an idiot? I mean, <laughs> some people haven't seen Minority Report. Come on now, dude. It's Minority Report. I saw it first in Korea. Really? I was in Korea when it released. Uh, and is it, does it well, have like, 14. does it have the weird Korean language? Uh, okay. It's just the <laughs> Korean language. All right. Your language's writing looks like alien writing. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I tell you what, it's a secret to the not Asians. It all looks like alien writing. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about? dude? <laughs> your, your writing looks like alien writing. The not Asian people are like, dude, it's lit you're comparing this to this. <laughs> Oh, squiggle, 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 squiggle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, is it a squiggle, squaggle or a squiggle, squiggle? <laughs> Somebody didn't skedaddle right on this paper. <laughs> well, what's up, y'all? Yeah, you know, um, I was very excited to buy this thing. Does this, this is such a very, I feel very happy that I'm alive to be in this era, right? Yeah. Because we're watching technological advancement just go so fucking fast. Mm -hmm. And look, for me, I love tech, but also at the same time, I like being away from tech too, which is why I farm. I do all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, like I like that type of stuff as well. Yeah. But I like the implications of what this brings for the future, right? I know a lot of people get scared about it. They're like, oh, people are going to be super detached. I think that no matter what, it's going to happen. There yeah. are more people in this world that are comfortable being alone by themselves and having a fake persona and doing all this other stuff mm. because there's no real world consequence to it. Mm. And most people are going to choose the route that's less, uh, that's more traveled than not, right? Mm -hmm. So if they could stay at home, create this fake personality, and I'm not using the word fake as in a negative thing, but like when you create an online personality, you could be whoever you want. Yeah. And so people are just, have they gravitate towards that. That's what I thought about recently. It's like, oh, because the biggest criticism is like, oh, that's not the real world. And you're 100% right. But if you give people the option not to live in the real world, which sometimes sucks, mm -hmm. they're going to go the other way. So whether this was made not now or later, it's, it's just the future. It's fucking nuts to me. Yeah, you know, I think, um, I mean, that's the thing about it. We, we are, and it ha it's been happening over the years, right? Where it's like, if you don't like being around people, goggles or not, you're not going to be around people. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There are already people that spend all day on the computer and just playing video games, streaming. Like, that's what they do, man. Um, now, at least, at the very least, I don't know, as these get smaller and smaller, you might have people actually leaving the house. <laughs> could you could you imagine what porn is going to be on like on that? That was literally my first reason to buy this <laughs> shit. Dude, fucking V-A-R Blowjobs? Whoa. Like, look down. Like, when you look, like, when oh, you're watching. You look down, there's somebody on your dick. And it's like, and it's like your dick? Yeah. Whoa. Except for, why does this mouth feel like my hand? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's a little dry. <laughs> <laughs> why does this mouth feel like a couch cushion? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, look, VR porn has been around for a long time. Um, but uh, this shit is, uh, you know, definitely going to take the porn situation up. To another, another level, level. I mean, you have to be a pretty big porn addict to just buy this for porn only. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's a lot of money just for some porn. Exactly, yeah. dude. I mean, because the other stuff is just free and it's on your phone. So right, you're right. tripping. But before we continue this. Yeah. I brought us. So this is a gift from my best friend out in New York, Gabo. For Christmas, he got me this. It's called Kui. Uh, Kui. Ra rare Extra Anejo Tequila. Okay, fun. I like tequila. I like extra. I like añejo. And look at this. Super smooth box. I like to be extra and I like the añejos. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, is it, what is this, suede? Is that suede or something like felt or some shit? Velvet? Velvet. But look at this right here. We're going to open up this box for everybody to see. 
Wow. Whoa. Let me feel that box again. Yeah, feel, it's nice, huh? What is this, velour? Is this a fucking... I, I a velour is box. Is this an Aniche sweatsuit I wore in high school? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> the fact that you have one of those is crazy, too. Yeah, I had a velour sweatsuit. Um, no, 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 a, a, a Volcal velour sweatsuit, oh Nelly, my, Nelly's brand. Oh, my God. <laughs> With some Air Force Ones I painted to match. I think this bottle is like a couple hundred bucks. Where? A little pricey. Um, well, but I had this in Sacramento, and it was quite exquisite. Oh, it comes with sleep goggles as well. Yes. If you're not going to use the AR stuff, you could just use the VR stuff. Man, uh, well, how fun. Where did you get this from? Gobble sent this to you. Um, Gobble got it for me for Christmas. Uh, well, that's exciting. I'm I'm wearing my new future headset, and I'm Smell. drinking $200 tequila. <sighs> smells great. It smells great. It smells really good. Um, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm high on life right now. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. What is this? So, it's the sake. Oh yeah, oh yeah, very delicious. Ah oh, man, this is um, this is this is a uh, this is trippy, dog. Here's here's what's one of the coolest things I, I just read about this shit. I'm talking about the goggles, not the tequila. Um, you know, there's a cam. It's not only you know uh something to watch with the goggles, but it has a camera. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So you can record these videos, uh, these like, you know, augmented reality video where you're in there, right? So when you watch these videos back, it's like you're back in that moment. I want to put those goggles on, and then when Mariel yells at me, it puts a stupid monster on her face. <laughs> Here's what you should do. <laughs> I just start laughing. Put the goggles on while she's yelling at you, record it, and then have her wear it and make her see how it feels like to be in your shoes. Perfect. You know what actually worked out really well for me? So Mariel has this thing where she'll just kind of word blab, mm -hmm. but she doesn't know what she's saying. Okay. And so that causes arguments for us because I'm like, that is not what you said. What you said is this. She goes, mm -hmm. no. Well, guess what? We have a Nest Cam in the house now. Oh. And so recently, she was like, I said this. I was like, you didn't say that. You said this. She goes, you're always wrong. I was like, cool. We have a Nest Cam. Played it back. She just starts laughing. Doesn't even apologize. I'm like, no, 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 no. You have to say sorry. Because my biggest frustration is with you. It's with these word games. I said <laughs> something. You said something. I said so Guess what? Yeah. We recorded it now. Proof is in the pudding, and pops. It was right in the pudding, pops. <laughs> ah. I, you have no idea how vindicated I felt. Oh, I do because I'm about to tell you a story too. <laughs> so, uh, let me tell you something. I felt like a superhero in that moment because sometimes she's not trying to gaslight me. It's just that she says things so quick that becomes habitual. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't remember what she said. And yeah. She, she kind of just hits around the ballpark, but specific words matter. Like, for example, if somebody says, hey, can you get something or did you get something? Mm. And those things causes arguments. <laughs> so she'll be like, this is this, this isn't what we were talking about, yeah. but it was like something along the lines of let's say, hey, did you get that thing? And if I said, oh no, I didn't get it. And then later on she goes, I asked you to get it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you said you asked me, did I get it? She yeah. goes, No, I asked you if you can get it. I'm like, no, no, you said did. She goes, Whatever, dude, you're trying to gaslight me. Record it. What does it say? Oh, I'm so dumb. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Apologize to you. Yes. Because you call, you basically called me a liar, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I got you in your face. Oh, man, I know exactly how that feels. Um, let's, let's, let's toast to that. Cheers to you, sir. Oh. Oh, this is good. That's great. That is tasty. That, that is, um, that's nice. That sake was good, too. And this is good. We're having a good day. Right this now. is really good. Um, I like when it... Gives you that slight little burn on the back of your throat. Mm. S -s -s subtle. I wouldn't even call it a sweetness. It's so, so subtle. It's just a subtle. It's very delicious. It's great. Um, wow. <clears throat> okay. Um, the other day, we have a few ring cameras uh, throughout the house. They only record when, like, little motion picks up. So sometimes it's hit or miss, right? Sometimes someone might be happy if, like, we can't always go to it to settle certain uh situations like that because it wasn't always recording right yeah. but one time bro a couple weeks ago um she was like ah babe we have this new like back gate that we installed she's like babe you forgot to lock the back gate i'm like did i she's like well it wasn't open and she's like i don't know she's like you're the last one that like you know took out the whatever i was like oh. pretty sure i locked it i said like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure i did but mm, i will uh i will i will keep an eye on that i will Try to pay attention to that, right? Because I'm like, there's no point in arguing this right now, right? It's like her word versus my word. So I just kind of sat quietly. 
went through security cameras, went through all the footage of that like little back back part of our house, go through all the fucking movements. And one, two weeks ago, her mom went to grab the vacuum outside because her parents were over for a couple weeks, grabbed the vacuum, closed the gate. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Yes. yes. I wanted to fucking scream in celebration. Yes! But I kept it inside. I was like, oh, got it. Uh, look, uh, your mom. <laughs> you know what you should, you could do now? Hey, babe, can you put on the headset for me? <laughs> and you just see the video playing right in front of her. Take it off. And it's just your face. <laughs> in your fucking face. You don't have to do that because you can, you can see. Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> I was like, hey, can you pinch the screen away? <laughs> Imagine, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's <just this. laughs> no, it's 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 me and my bent over mooning her. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> and then she was just like, oh, and then I was like, and then she was she was gonna get to it, but I'm like, so what do you have to say? <laughs> it was it was she was like, I was getting there. I'm sorry. I was like, thank you. <laughs> Not my lady, you gotta fucking beat it out of her, dude. <laughs> She'll just find it cute or whatever. But if you make a mistake, she's like, you need to apologize. It's like, no, 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 no. I will take my sweet time because you took your sweet time. So let's continue to do this. I will apologize when I'm good and ready. Yeah, man. Uh, so Those moments feel really good. Let's cheers to that again because, uh, wow. I know it, it feels, it, this might have been, that might there might have been the highlight of my 12 years of marriage. Yeah. Know? <laughs> Those better than the, the kids, the, the actual marriage that happened, the, yeah. our first kiss, all that other stuff. Just kept being able to prove that I was right. In your face. And guess what? For me, I've been it happened twice now. Mm. So I've been able to go back <laughs> and like, what did you say here? And she goes, oh, I could have sworn. It doesn't matter if you swore. You got mad at me for something that you messed up on. So remember, now I think she's a little more conscious about what she's saying, which I'm actually happy for mm. because it's like those little things change what happens next. Yeah. Like, did you and can you are two separate things. And the, th the thing is, it's like, <laughs> like I said, this is not the example, but it was along these lines of like when I pointed that out, she goes, well, anyways, you should just get it out. Any no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. Now we're talking about two different things. Right, right. I'm talking about this where you said I promised something and yeah. I broke my promise. Uh -huh. And you kept saying that I'm a liar and I broke my promise, <laughs> which pisses me off. No, say the first thing. Hurts your feelings. Yes, it hurt my feelings. <laughs> Don't run away from it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, embrace that. Can I tell you something? <laughs> it cut real deep and there are no stitches that could heal this open wound in my heart. <laughs> I say lead with that. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 Get yeah. Get some yeah. fake sympathy. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're smart, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I instead like this. Of, instead of this makes me angry at you, this makes me feel this way. Okay. You obliterated my heart. <laughs> 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 She's like, hey, back it up a little bit. <laughs> you make me want to kill myself. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. We'll be right back. Dudes behind the foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by da, 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 Freeze Pipe, my friends. Ever since humans discovered the magic of cannabis, one question has always remained. Why is this smoke so damn hot? Enter Freeze Pipe, makers of the coldest glass pieces that eliminate harsh smoke, throat burning, and coughing attacks. I know you guys hate it. If you are a brand new smoker out there, right? When that dry air gets stuck in your throat and you <laughs> you can't look cool in front of the ladies. And guess what? That's what Freeze Pipe is for, my friends. When you're into pipes, bubblers, bongs, even dab rings and joints, there's a freeze pipe to match your style. Traditional pieces that use water filtration for smooth hits, but with freeze pipe, you get water filtration and their market-leading freezable glycerin chambers that cool smoke by over 300 degrees. I freaking like it. It's refreshing. And guess what, my friends? I recreationally use it every now and then. And guess what? Me likes it, dude. Me likes it a lot. So shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more at thefreezepipe.com and use code DUDES for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code DUDES for 10% off American-owned, priced affordably with free domestic shipping. Order today and start fighting fire. Nice. It did. It didn't work. <laughs> what did you say? I told her I was going to cut out my heart and leave it beating on her fucking dresser. 
And she said, hmm. <laughs> well, do it then, bitch. <laughs> do it. Um, yeah, I was just thinking how, like, you know, we're talking about replaying real life moments. And I got these goggles. And it's a very Black Mirror episode of Dudes Behind the Foods right now, you know? Oh, yeah. Technology, it's crazy, man. I'm talking on the mic. He's like, you're paying attention to me. <laughs> no, literally. That's why I had to take him off. Because I was like. It's just too fun. It's too new. I was just, you know, I was trying to set it up. If, if my shit was set up, I would have had him on the whole time. Well, let me see here. Here, um, tell me about your weekend. <laughs> First of all. He's like, tell me about your feelings and your innermost <laughs> darkest thoughts. <laughs> I, still, I still need to get this shit just, oh, wow. Enter wow. passcode. Deep, top. Oh, that's oh, wrong. He's speaking Thai. <laughs> 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 I, I have it set to tie. So what? So what? Oh, shit. Deep top cop. Oh. Nip, nip, nip. Nip. Okay. Bill Cosby. Who's doing fucking Thai Bill Cosby? So what? So what? So what? All right, no, I need to do this later. That's crazy. Because I'm just, I'm just not going to be able to focus on you. And 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 this our uh, beautiful podcast and but, our beautiful. Po- can I ask you something? What's so up, I got into a conversation with somebody recently. I wanted to hear your thoughts on it. <clears throat> I know in the last episode we we touched on like the hip hop topic as well. Uh-huh. Do you did you see that interview where Most Dev was talking about <laughs> uh, you Drake? Know, Drake, if yeah. he, is he's hip hop or not? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I I guess for me I can't understand because I respect Most Def a lot. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot. Who a lot. the fuck doesn't? Right. I know. I don't know why he doesn't think Drake is hip hop though. Okay, so I brought this up w- with Rick on No Chaser. Okay, we did like we did a, a talk about it, and Rick kind of he he gave me a perspective that I wasn't thinking about. Because for me, yes, I went into it being like Drake does a lot of yeah he does a lot of poppy hits. Yes, he is he makes pop music as well. But I also feel like he has a lot of songs that how can you not call these like hip hop songs? You know yeah. what I'm saying like bars. Good, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the beat's not no, like, uh, corny shit. It's like, you know, this Good is... bars. Yeah. And um, Rick was like, you know, you got to think about how, you know, most deaf is one of, like, really, you know, people would never question if most deaf is hip-hop, right? And when he speaks of hip-hop, he's probably talking more about, like, you know, the the elements of hip-hop. Fucking... The MC, the DJ, the DJ, graffiti, um, I see, I see, breaking. I see. You know what I'm saying? Where I it's see. like these are. It's almost like the fundamentals. Almost like it's like this religion of shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole thing. And I'm like, oh, and I then see I, what you're saying. So then I and I was also like, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. But I'm like, well, how about like, I don't know. Um, you know, you you know, like Kendrick Lamar isn't fucking like tagging and, and breakdancing and shit, you know, but he was like, but then Rick was like, yeah, but you know, it's kind of more about like, how are they, like the culture aspect, you know, like what uh, are they bringing to the culture, moving it forward, shit like that when you guess, when I, when you when you think of like a hip hop artist, right? So I'm like, okay, so it's kind of like more of like a semantics thing because like these kids nowadays, when they think about like hip hop, they're not, they're not thinking about fucking tagging and, and breaking and, you know, that type of shit and DJing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so... You know, I think it's 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 more it's more about that. Like, okay, yeah, Drake raps, but is he the culture? Hip hop, yeah. yeah, is, he, yeah, yeah. is he the culture? Is he like doing more to move the culture forward? That type of shit. All right. Mm-hmm. I guess like my thoughts on that too would be. I mean, that's yeah. I didn't think about that. It would be like he was also somebody was he is somebody that <clears throat> changed kind of the face of hip hop for a good like eight years, I would say, where people were imitating his sound and they still are now. For sure. Right? Like he was like the go-to sound where everybody started, instead of rapping about guns and shooting and shit like that, which obviously Kanye did as well. Mm-hmm. But when Drake came in now, it was like, I put my heart on my sleeve. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think he, he definitely got the stigma of being like the emotional rapper, right? Yeah. Um, and he wasn't the first rapper to be emotional, but, you know, it kind of became like a meme almost, right? Yeah. The most Dev actually did kind of apologize too, though. Did you see that? No, I didn't see he that. He went one. on like, I think it was IG Live. He was just on live for like an hour and like a snippet of it was just being like, yo, like Drake, look. I mean, I meant no disrespect by that. Because I also felt... I don't I, think it was being disrespectful at all. I don't think it was disrespectful, but I do feel like the delivery could have been... Like, they asked him a question, he answered the question how he felt, right? And yeah. that's okay. Everybody has their opinions. I do feel like... I felt like as a, like, forefather in this shit, kind of, like, um, you know, I think the 
answer could have come off a little less shady, right? People thought he was kind of like, you know, roasting Drake. Um, and as like a big Most Def fan and a big Drake fan, uh, I was kind of like, ah, you know, when I when I saw the Most Def, I was like, ah, man, you, had, you didn't have to do that to Drake. <laughs> yeah, 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 Why yeah, you yeah. got to do that to Drake, right? Yeah. But he put out like a kind of like an apology. Like, look, my, like, my, my dude, I meant no disrespect. Like, I was asked a question. Um, and like, you know, I respect you as an artist, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, um, I forget exactly what he said, but he was kind of like, look, like I, I didn't mean it like that, you know? Yeah, but if, you know, that's the hard part too. Like now with the internet, people kind of sometimes, mm, these questions are asked and they're asked on the spot. Mm -hmm. So it's just like that first run of the thought. I know. Right. And you know, this is why I, I kind of tell people too, when you listen to these podcasts, listen to everything just like with a grain of salt. Because these are either feelings and thoughts that are in the moment and people are just shooting out ideas mm -hmm. and it's not cement. It's not in stone, right? Sometimes, you know, I, I, I love to think about what I'm saying before I say it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, and not when, me. And oh. when, you, when you're on a podcast, you feel pressure to answer immediately, right? Because like to what you're saying, um, when you're just kind of like, you know, spitballing, just fucking just chatting it up, chopping it up. Uh, podcast can be tricky because you might say something and after the fact you're like, oh, I didn't mean that or yeah. I didn't mean to like that. You know, one of the things that I addressed on earlier in the podcast, like, you know, people, obviously these are like the Reddit people who hate me, right? And they go, <laughs> didn't you say this in another podcast? Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I did. And I changed mm. my mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you've never changed your mind after having conversations with somebody, mm -hmm. right? Even in this conversation alone, my thought was like, I don't understand it. And then you explain it. I go, oh, I could kind of see that. Yeah. That's what happens in real life conversations. Like, mm -hmm. so sometimes I feel like when you guys listen to like interviews or podcasts, take it with a grain of salt in the moment. And then if somebody changes their mind later, you can't shove it in their face. Right. They now they're on your side, which is the ideal that you like. So why are you now upset at them? Especially, man, when they <laughs> when they ask questions like that, they're looking for that fucking little minute clip, bro. They're looking for that controversial statement. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel like I, I almost feel like most of kind of got trapped in that shit. You know a what little saying? bit. And this is it. Also brings up this thing too, where if we're going to talk about like current stuff, right? Like a, a, by this time, it's already Yaz in Bay, not most Def. <laughs> okay, my bad. Yaz in Bay, <laughs> <laughs> but um. Uh, you know, with uh, Shannon Sharp, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, the whole Cat Williams thing that happened mm -hmm. uh, just a day ago, uh, the interview with Monique just came out. Yeah. And did you listen to the whole thing? Just clips. I listened to half, and I actually, Monique kind of reminds me of Dr. Umar Johnson sometimes. Okay. Because they speak so prophetically, mm. you kind of don't even go as far to fact check them. No, you just, you want to believe. You want to believe it because there's such, the same thing with Cat Williams, right? Right, 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 right. Because their idea is that we all have receipts, right? Mm. And there are, with Cat Williams' thing too, and I said it on my podcast too, it's like half of it I believe 100%. Mm -hmm. The other half, I don't. So then 50% then. Yeah, 50 cent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, about 50 cent, <clears throat> right? So, I, <laughs> so only about that much. Yeah. And so, but the thing is like sometimes when people only listen to the part that's believable, they disregard the other 50% lies. Mm. But the 50% lies also is a reflection of your character too. And it honestly should be weighed more than the truth that's being said too. Mm. But people go, oh, he's a truth seeker. The man said he read 3,000 books in a year and, uh, it right. was, and it wasn't fiction. And it was actual books, which would mean that he read eight and a half books a day. Yeah. I mean, look, you got, you know, some things you, some things you got to call cap on as the kids say. Yeah. You know? And like you said, uh, no, a hundred percent. Um, do I believe some things? Yes. Do I believe all the things? No. Mm -mm. I definitely don't believe the 3,000 books or, or whatever the statistic is, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the Monique shit was interesting because, you know, I do believe, uh, like you said, uh, the, some of the stuff she was saying. I think, yeah, I think a lot of it was probably true and a lot of shit has happened to her um, that she's trying to shed some light on. But then, you know, a lot of the stuff that people are kind of like, you know, spilling the tea on it's like kind of like your perspective on stuff too. Yes. You know, it's like your own personal <clears throat> perspective. So it's like someone might have a way they remember this and someone else might have a way they, uh, a different way they remember it. Yeah. You know? So there was a diatribe that Monique went through where she was talking about uh, this interaction that she had with D.L. Hughley and his podcast or his radio show. Mm -hmm. And they kind of told the same story, but two very different perspectives. Yeah. Right. And so it was the thing of where basically she said that he wasn't respecting me and all this other stuff. But D.L. thing is like, OK, I did respect you because I didn't release the podcast because you felt uncomfortable. Right. Which is the highest level of respect. But Monique's thing was like in in order to get to that point. 
we ha- I had to argue or fight for it. And DL's like, no, you didn't. You mm. just called me up mm-hmm. and you said that you felt uncomfortable. And I called my people and said, don't put, don't put that out. Yeah. So now it's like a he said, she said, mm-hmm. right? But because people want to believe in the abused in this case, yeah. now DL's, DL's point doesn't fucking matter. Right. But really it's like they're both kind of saying the same shit but two different perspectives on things. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say what's really true or not, mm-hmm. right? And then we're kind of in the court on the outside going like he said, she said. Mm-hmm. But I will say this to people, right? I'm pretty sure you've been in this situation where people have, were lying on you mm. constantly. Mm. And no matter what you did, you couldn't sway their opinion just mm. because this other person took the victim perspective. Mm-hmm. And you chose to say, no, this isn't what had happened. So, like, for me, when I see this stuff, I take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. We, we wasn't there. I know. So we're just going to have to just do it for entertainment purposes. Exactly. Just enjoy the drama and then, like, just take it for what it is, man. Don't don't get too invested in this shit. Who knew that the comedy world had so much drama? I didn't I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, dog. I know, like, comics don't like other comics, yeah. but that's, like, every artist, that's right? everything and everybody in every category of everything. Yeah, but this shit is kind of crazy, yeah. man. Like, I'm like, damn, you guys are really airing out, like, dirty laundry on each other. Mm-hmm. And so D.L. Hugley calls Shannon Sharp the... Uh, the 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 Wendy Williams now. The yeah, new I one. saw. Him. I was yeah. like, ooh, that's a diss. <laughs> Which I kind of like wonder too. Like, do you look at Shannon Sharp as like, are, are you just creating sensationalist views now? I think. Well, I think Shannon Sharp. He's just asking questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just he's just. I think he had a, a couple of interviews that went crazy, and now I think people are almost hitting him up to be like, I got some shit to say now. Yeah. I got some dirty laundry to air out. You know. So I think like you know all he did was. Ask some questions, and now the shit's going crazy, and now he's almost becoming like, oh, this is the podcast that you fucking spill some tea on, you know? Shannon Sharp, it was cra- I, I couldn't stop laughing in the podcast, and I'm not sure if people ever pick this up, but Monique likes to ask, like, rhetorical questions, mm. and sometimes that requires you to actually sit there and think, but then <laughs> Shannon Sharp was so dumbfounded, so she'll be saying, I'm not giving a specific example, but yeah. it'll be like, so in this situation, Shannon, what would have happened if this? And Shannon doesn't have an answer, he, so he just ignores it, goes on to another question. <laughs> but it sounds like he's trying to play it off as, oh, I don't want to end because it's controversial, but mm-hmm. it's like Shannon doesn't know what to say. That There's a clip of him that cracked me up uh, for the, from this Monique interview where she's talking about how she was on set for a movie and the fucking trailer blew up. And instead of people, like the producers asking like, if she was okay, they just asked her, like, what happened to the wigs that her character was wearing, and she just kind of, like, felt that this was disrespectful. But she's like, the trailer blew up. And then he goes, and I think this is going to get memed. If not, I'm going to meme it. She goes, and the wigs, they said, where's the wigs? He goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, huh? And I'm like, yo, that's so, that's just like, he's so, he's so funny. You know? Shannon Sharp, half the time he didn't know what she was talking about, <laughs> and he's trying to play it off like he does, and then fuck it, he goes, oh, come on, Monique. <laughs> That's not, that's not, okay, we just gonna move past that, Moldy. Okay, okay, Mo, come on, you are, is that what you're about to do, Moldy? <laughs> he's, he's, he's fucking, uh, fucking, uh, Tracy, uh, Tracy Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ballpark flex. <laughs> Uh, we we need to spill more tea on our shit, dog. Let's get these views up, you know? Uh, we don't have tea, dude. <laughs> well, guess what, dog? What? I got something to tell you about somebody you know. Well, tell me something that I know about, no, something I don't know. Let me tell you this, bro. Let me tell you this. Your wife <laughs> <laughs> likes pineapple on pizza. And guess what? Last night, I punched her in the mouth because of it. Whoa. And I locked her up in the basement, and she hasn't seen daylight in a whole day. Because you also like pineapple on pizza. And then she broke free, and she socked me in my mouth and locked me up in the basement. But she didn't know I liked that stuff. So my dick got hard. And then you guys kissed. And it was great. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't live in this world. I'd like to remove myself from that world. But I do understand, like I said on the podcast sense, mm. where I just be saying thoughts. And sometimes people bring up topics. Oh, this is a fun topic to talk about. Yeah. And we talk about it and then we fucking move on. Like, I know. I've definitely gotten DMs from people. It's like, hey, man, I didn't know that you didn't like me. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, dude? yeah It's yeah. just a podcast topic. Like, right. It's already on the fucking here. So if we're talking. Well, maybe you should realize that words have power, David. So. Oh, I do, but I give people a fair shake. 
All right. And some people just don't like it when people don't like everything that they do. Sometimes you're not going to have great things. It's okay. 99% of the stuff I put out is hot garbage, <laughs> but I'm happy with the 1% that's good. And it's okay. Chia refuses to do podcasts be- for that reason, because she's just, she's not, she doesn't feel like, you know, like a quote unquote, like media trained person. Like she hates thinking like, oh God, am, did I say something wrong? Like are people getting yeah, mad? She just, she like, you know, she just, she's like, no, she'd rather not. Let me tell you something, dude. I, you know, we get older and we kind of learn a lot about ourselves and then we kind of become more comfortable with who we are as we get older. Mm. So my threshold for leaning into other people's like feelings and emotions is already very low. (laughs) As I get older, it gets worse and worse. Okay. Right. And now like I started figuring out in like certain groups there, it's like, oh, I kind of come off as like an asshole, Mm -hmm. right? Mm, Well, yeah. And then I had to explain to a group of friends. It's like, okay, it's not that I'm an asshole, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, listen, you asked me if I was down to do something with the group. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm an asshole. But now you got your guys' feelings are hurt Mm. because I don't want to do it. Mm. Would you have better liked it that I lied and had a terrible time when I come with you guys? Mm. Or I could just be like, hey, you guys enjoy that. And then I'll meet you guys up at another time. Mm -hmm. And I think for them, sometimes it's like when you're younger, you're just down for anything. My time is precious. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow or not. And I don't want to do things that I don't want to do. And I don't want to take away from your joy the things that you enjoy. Facts. So how come sometimes, I think that's what I like about Chia too. Chia just don't fuck with nobody. She don't care. Right? And if she likes you, she loves you. Yeah. And that's kind of why I really appreciate her. You know, like you could tell this is what you get. I was just going to say, I think you just, you need fewer friends, you know, because, uh, If you just hang out with the people who actually know you, then there's going to be no question as to whether you were being an asshole or not. <laughs> no, this is this has nothing to do with this this specific group, but there's you know like so the me Bart Gio and then we have a couple of other friends and then we're all going to go to Vegas. Mm-hmm. This is another situation where I think I kind of came off as an asshole because they're like, oh, we're going to do this group activity together, <laughs> right? And yep. then I was like, oh, I don't want to go eat at the spot. I've been there. It's cool, but if you guys like it. You guys go, and then me and Mary, we're going to try this other restaurant. Let's meet up for dessert after. Yeah. And these guys were like, why do you guys, what do you want to break from the group? It's like, why do you, it's like, dude, we're here to hang out with each other. And I'm like, it's just lunch. Yeah. We're going to hang out at night. We're going to chill together, have a good time. It's, it's literally 40 minutes. Can they relax? So that's what I thought. Yeah. But then it was like a big deal. It's like, oh, you, the purpose of this is that we all hang out together. I was like, the, yeah. 24 7 though bro I, I was a little confused about that so i had i had to send like i had to ask other people because now i don't want to be like an asshole right? yeah i'm like am i am i being a dick right now and so i sent a couple of friends like no nah, i think i would be okay with that too like if you just wanted to go eat something with your wife yeah and then you guys have like a moment together and you guys come back yeah but i guess like i'm like no that's where i feel like i was okay being honest with myself for sure no we're too grown to be that needy bro like <laughs> like, like who, who cares that's what i thought but now I'm like, oh, with this group, I think they like doing things together. So now I have to gear myself towards if I'm going to hang out with them, who I love, they're like some of my closest friends. They like to do everything together. So we just going to have to roll like that. They would have learned quick with me and Chia, dog. <laughs> and me and Chia were on that trip. They would have learned quick. <laughs> it's like, we all got to hang out now. <laughs> <We're> like, sorry. <laughs> See you at the club, bro. Because, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I'm curious. Like, if, if you all listen to this podcast, do you guys do everything together as a group? And if one person goes away and comes back, is that disrespectful? Because I this is like growing pains for me too. Where like, <laughs> am I am I just that? Am I being annoying? You know? Look, man. Marinate on that. We'll be right back. Yo, I can't think of a design for a new T-shirt. You got anything? Um. Maybe, maybe. Oh, okay, check this out, check this out. All right, since it's the year of the dragon, you know what I'm saying? How about like a dragon comes in, right? You know what I'm saying? But it's like, oh, but it, it, it farts rainbows, you know what I'm saying? And then like, so it's like, then you have the devil and then the, and then Jesus, and they are both playing badminton, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like a battle between the two sides, right? So, and then you got girls twerking on one side, twerking on one shoulder, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, oh, this is how I feel. I like the ass, but then we got, oh, my, oh, my right, wife right, and my... <laughs> I, I got it. I think I think I got it. Thank you. One hour later. Bam. Exactly. You know what I'm saying.
We do a transition, right? Nah. I'm not. I don't know how to do it. It's cool. Um. Oh, all right. What? <laughs> what should we sell that for? Twenty five dollars. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nah, man. Um, I've had to. I, I I've probably spoken on this before, but you know, I had a lot of people like guy homies who like now you know we're older. They get, like they are had to have wives and stuff like that. So immediately, of course, they're like, "Yo, my wife would love to meet Chia. Let's go on a double date." You know what I'm saying? And yeah, we have spoken about this for sure, but let's talk about it again um, because just cause. And it's like, I know my wife um, and I have to put things in perspective for people. And I'm like, let's do this. Okay. Let's kind of meet in a group setting first, make sure our wives fuck with each other, enjoy each other. So I'm not subjecting my wife like almost like a blind date. Oh yeah. Like a blind friend date. I have to feel like she has to enjoy hanging out with this other girl just because me and her dude are friends. You know what I'm saying? Like that's kind of like a lot of pressure. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've had to tell people, like, hey, look, I'm gonna be straight up. My wife, she don't really like making new friends. I'm the same way. I'm good on new friends. Like, I don't really see the point right now. It's like good acquaintances. We, when we see each other, it's fun as shit. Yeah. But in terms of like being a part of my inner circle in everyday life, I think I'm capped. <laughs> I always, look, I always have to, I, I'm definitely capped. And I tell people all the time, guys, the way my life is set up right now, I barely see my bestest friends. My, my core homies. Eric, Peter, Rick. I rarely see Peter. I have to really, really try hard to see Eric because of kids and life and, and driving. Mm -hmm. Only reason I see Rick is because of work. And it's like, if I barely have time to see the people that I value the most in my life, why would I want to add someone to the mix and make time for someone that I don't know? Yeah. For what does that do for me? Are you, is this fucking, is this new friendship with you going to fucking better me as a person? Yeah. Or is it going to like uh, 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 improve my like quality of life? Probably not, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. And even this too, especially with the uh, with the wedding, right? And there was a lot of people who, <laughs> who I wanted to be there. Yeah. But, dude, it was like a 65-person wedding, right? This, mm -hmm. it, I, I did it based on convenience, mm -hmm. right? Who was like in the area. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was super last minute. Mm -hmm. It was for my parents. But it was a good wedding either way. But there was one friend from Sacramento who was like, most of I think all of them were cool except for like one, right? And mm -hmm. one person was like, <laughs> you know, they always start off by throwing a light jab. But then because of my personality, I don't let it slide. Right. And, I, you know, he was just like, oh, but you had new friends at your wedding. You invited the old homies. And I was like, <laughs> and then really stopped. And I looked at him and I was like, you got something to say? <laughs> and it put me in a bad mood. Yeah. Because it wasn't something I felt good about. Like I hated the fact that the majority <laughs> of my good friends weren't there, you know. And it just, you know, stopped and I look at him like, you got something to say? Mm -hmm. what, you, what you got to say? Yeah. And it was like, oh, I just thought it was like weird that, you know. You know, we've known you for fucking years. And mm -hmm. it's like, they don't, they were cool with it though. He was the one causing a little fuss yeah. in front of the other friends. Mm. Sacramento people built a little different. You know, they fucking confrontational shit. And wow. Like, yeah. Whoa. And so I was like, okay, let me just put like this. And guess who he brought? He brought you. He was like, well, you know, Tim, like you guys are like, he's not, he's kind of new in your life. I was like, let me just tell you something though. In the last three years, I've spent more time with him than I have you. <laughs> yeah. I spent more time with him than my own wife. <laughs> yeah. Facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we've known each other for a long time. How you affected my life in the last five to six years mm -hmm. doesn't even come close. Mm -hmm. So you're comparing apples to oranges. There's people in your life that he went to a different college. I was like, you met in college that you're way closer to, to them than you're me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Because they were with you at a very important part of your life. Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. He also lives in the area. He also officiated a fucking wedding. I'm also like, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude. You, you're the homie. I don't even know your wife. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
what the fuck is it? What are you talking about? Yeah. And I think sometimes people kind of confuse like time over quality. It's like, I've oh, known you for Oh, that's why this cup oh, is broken. Crack. I smashed it earlier. You dummy. I'm just gonna. Wow. I'm pouring very expensive tequila and it's I'm okay. diluting it. It's okay. You All right. It. Sorry. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. But you know what I mean? I feel like quality matters more than time because mm-hmm. I could have known somebody for eight years, but if we kind of fuck with each other halfway, that's not going to beat out like a solid three years of somebody that I spent like career work with. No way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we're like, we're like besties now. <laughs> he knows a lot about me. <laughs> oh, you know way too much about me. I probably should not have let you in that quick, dog. It's just like we could add each other's careers. <laughs> yeah, facts. And like the only other person that could really do that is like Rick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I trusted you way too soon, I think. Yeah, but I'm very good, though. <laughs> I'm so very good. <laughs> I sure hope so, dog. I sure hope so. You, has your life exploded? <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, not yet. You just wait a year. I sent it to you. I planted the seeds already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you ever did that to me, dog, I'm making up so much shit about you. And people believe it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's facts, man. Look, I've I've spent more time with you um, than pro- like I mean, look, we we literally traveled the whole United States. Yeah, together. for like two years, pretty yeah. much. You know what I'm saying? Like just traveling and in cars and planes and. Just, you and me just eating and drinking and, and you didn't gain any weight. You look exactly the same. <laughs> Bullshit. You lost weight, dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> this photo sent me this photo. He was like, look, it was the first time we shot, shot said foods. I'm like, what is that swamp creature next to you? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Different man then. <coughs> A big boy. A very big boy. And yeah. by the way, people, they people are finding out that I used to sing from that last clip. Oh, man. When we literally did a song together. I realized that, like, because, you know, you are you got a few reels that have been kind of popping off lately, right? So you got all these new followers. Yeah. So I posted that little shit. We collab posted on that little singing post. So many comments. This fool David can sing? I'm like, oh, y'all have no idea. <laughs> We got a whole song together. He got hits. You know, you know what's interesting? Like, I, I wanted to explain to people all the stories. It's like, you know you're a good singer. You, okay, it's like, and we talked about this before, too. Mm-hmm. There's a difference, mm-hmm. you know? I know where my voice and talent lies, and I know how to use what I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when some people say I'm, I'm like, just as good, I'm like, as somebody who loves, lo- loves music like that, I would disagree. Because, like, I can't do what they do, and I don't love music like they love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of feel like a visitor and a fly on the wall where I'm just kind of happy to be in the orbit of it. Because <laughs> if I put on that pressure saying I'm a real musician, then I got to be about what I say. It, you know? But if you wanted to, you know what I'm saying, with some producers and shit, you could put out a little banger, a little fucking EP, dog, if you really wanted to. But even like the difference between me and you, like you kind of know music, you have your style and you have your own vibe. Mm. So when you make music, you know the gener- the direction you want to go. Sometimes. Like me, I consider myself like a slightly above a karaoke singer, right? Nah. So it's like, I don't know what my sound vibe, I don't know what I'm looking for It is as an art piece. I'll tell you this, I'm slightly above a karaoke singer. You're above me, okay? <laughs> Just a little bit. No, 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 way more because I can... I can carry a tune, but you're a good singer. You, have you ever done Craig David covers? He's actually my one of my biggest, two two biggest influences, Craig David and Brian McKnight. Okay, because we, when you posted that recent clip of you singing, um, I heard it and I was like, oh, he would kill some Craig David shit. If you, I'm not sure if you've posted some. I'm sure you have. I've had one Craig David cover, yeah. So And then Chia was like, oh, David sounds like Craig David right there. I was like, girl, I was just, <laughs> yes, yes. He was, he was my biggest, biggest influence, especially because of the guitar and singing aspect, mm-hmm. right? So there was early on, there was like Gabe Bundock and um, Jeremy Passion. But mm-hmm. before them, it was always Craig David. And there was a specific, if you guys look it up, he's like out in the Caribbean and he had his guitar. Man, his guitarist was fucking amazing. Mm. And he would just fucking kill it. And then you see Craig David just doing his thing. Mm. And that's what I modeled my style after was that shit. Because I wanted to be, I, I wanted to be, you know, the sexy light skin with the <laughs> with the little thing here, with the little, the, the, the you cut little shit. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was fat and weird shaped. Well, look, man, there's a mark. Look, here's what you got to do. Learn how to play a ukulele. And then you could just be like the next, what's that old, that old school, um... The one, the really, the... the, the Somewhere yeah. over the... B- but it is. Okay, yeah, you could be you could be him, a Korean version. The amount of work it takes to get that fat 
is the same amount of work <laughs> to get buff. <laughs> That's a lot of dedication, dude. You have to fight through <laughs> wanting to throw up every day. <laughs> Just don't move. When I get above 220 pounds, I feel like fucking garbage, dude. <laughs> I get it because when I get above like, I think my heaviest was like one 155. And I was like, I feel gross. Doesn't it feel weird though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, because uh, I'm little. Keep in mind, y'all. I'm, I know that doesn't sound like a lot of weight, but I'm, I'm little. You know what I'm saying? So if I hit a certain, like, you know, the shit just starts, just, just hitting the wrong places. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's so the method to getting healthier is there. It's just, it's I don't want to do it. It's so hard, man. Like I tell, let me tell you something. If I po posted videos like this. And I got on this. <laughs> I would be a fucking menace, man. <laughs> I'm um, I've been, I finally hit my trainer, um, to start like coming to the crib again. I saw and you, you, you got veins in your arms, man. You think you're so cool. Well, you know what? That's kind of a cheat code because I'm a naturally veiny person, even when I'm not like working out. I have baby arms. <laughs> you have little T Rex arms. Oh. <laughs> And when he came over last week to help me start training and shit, we kind of did the math. I was like, yo, when's the last time I saw you thinking like I hadn't worked out with him in like a couple months? He's like, bro, I haven't seen you since Q was born. I'm like, yeah, oh. damn, that's a year. Meaning I literally haven't worked out in damn near a year, dog. Hey, how sore were you? As shit. <laughs> like my, he had me doing some ab shit. Bro, when I tell you, like, you know, when you work out, you're sore for like the next couple of days. My abs were sore the whole week until I saw him again. I was like, hey, dog, not going to lie. My abs are still sore, bro. So we didn't do no abs shit yesterday. But um, it was just, I was, it, it, it hurt. You're trying to get snatched, huh? I don't even know if I need to be snatched. But um, Chia, Chia, <laughs> she said, had, remember, remember when she had saved that picture of this? Hey, I think you would look good with this body. She did another little slick shit the other day. It was one of those things that pops up on Instagram, like, which body type are you? And it's like these little animated ones, these little drawn ones. She's like, she's like, I think you could, I think you could do that. I th think you would look at it as this one, babe. It was like number three. And I'm like, that's, that's what you want? I was like, I could probably do that in a couple months, to be honest, because it wasn't like swole. Yeah. It was just kind of like, you know, cut. Uh, little, little, like slim cut, you know. She's like, I think so too. I'm like, all right, I hear you. You want to tell, tell want me to tell you what Burial did like a month ago? <laughs> that shit fucking irritated me. <laughs> so, I sleep with just my boxers, and you know, wintertime you get a little, you know, get a little puffy. Yum. I get up, I wake up, I go to the bathroom, and she goes, whoa. <laughs> I'm not even fucking lying. <laughs> that shit ruined my whole day. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> like like a fucking two year old dude. What kind of shit was that, dude? And I'm like going in the shower. I'm like, all right, cool. I go in the shower. I'm just like, what the fuck, man? Don't fucking do that shit to somebody. Did I tell you what Veda said? Uh -uh. <laughs> she has this little toy, with this little fat little figurine, right? Uh -huh. And I'm like, Veda, who do, who is this? Who does this look like? She's like, Unto David. <laughs> I'll fucking kill that child. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'll kill that David. <laughs> I'll kill that little David toy right now. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's like this little round little toy. I was like, what's this, who's this little? I said, Unto David. And then she was like, and who's who's the man you you work with? I was like, Uncle Rick? Said, Uncle Rick. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this one story before we end this podcast. Yeah, right? yeah. When I was working at my parents' store, there was this, uh, there was this uh, grill store next to us, right? Grill, you said? Grill. Okay. Grill store. Oh, grills, like teeth grills. Yeah, okay. they would do like jewelry, custom shit like that. They had grills. It's these Korean people. Mm. So they had this little girl. Her name was Sarang, which means love. Mm -hmm. Her mother was pregnant with her younger brother at the time. And they're coming over and they're seeing, I'm like, oh, hi. And then, you know, she sees me or whatever, whatnot. And she goes, my mommy's pregnant. And then she looks at their mom, rubs her belly. You already know where this is going. And she looks at you and she goes, are you pregnant too? And she rubs my belly. Mm. And I wanted to sock that little baby in her fucking stupid ass fucking face. <laughs> I've never been so disrespected by a child in my life, dude. She rubbed my fucking belly and asked me if I was pregnant too. <laughs> wow. Kids, uh, I'll tell you what, before we end this podcast, I got another story. When I was in... I'm going to sock Veda in the mouth. <laughs> and she goes... Fatty, fat boy. You hit like a fatty, fat boy. Uh, <laughs> it didn't even hurt. There was so much cushion. <laughs> when uh, when I was like in first grade, kindergarten, first grade, 
one of the childcare workers, like the people just like watching over us, was this dude, younger dude. He must have been like, I don't know, interning or volunteering. But he looked in the face, he looked like my cousin Molony. Okay. They had similar like brown curly hair, glasses. And I used to tell him, like, you look like my cousin Molony, right? He's like, a girl? I'm like, yes. And I would tell him like every week, right? And <laughs> one day, I, he must have been offended by this, right? Thinking back on it now, he's probably like, I don't know, 19, 20, okay. just volunteering, right? Maybe even a high school kid, whatever. Because I was in first grade, right? So I was like, you look like my cousin. And he goes, he, he goes, a girl? I'm like, yeah. He, le- <laughs> he, he bends down, dog. Gets eye, eye, eye level with me. He goes, well, you look like a little elf. And that was his fucking, like, he was, like, getting we're getting real with me. He was like, a girl? I was like, yeah. He was like, well, you look like a little elf. <laughs> this, was the person that you assaulted named Will Ferrell? <laughs> <laughs> so, the man was pissed. And he, like, I always felt like he kind of, like, looked around. I was like, well, guess what? You look like a little elf. Guess what? Ear butt stinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? I fucked your bitch, little boy. <laughs> Push you up against the wall, start taking your wallet. <laughs> Fuck you with your Velcro wallet. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, guys, thanks for watching another lovely, splendid, splendiferous, super califragilistic, expedosis, expialidosis episode of the No Chaser. What the fuck? Dudes behind the foods. Um, wow. Make sure you, genius brain, make sure you like, comment, Share, subscribe, uh, watch the next episode, uh, or this, watch this episode, watch the last one, Foodie Calls, too, um, and, uh, bye. Bye, Veda. Yo, it's the dudes, behind the food, dudes.